On April 22, 2014, uh, in the case of Shu TV Coalition to Defend Affirmative Action, the U.S. Supreme Court reinstated by 6 to 2 vote Michigan's state constitutional ban on race conscious university admissions, which Michigan voters had passed in 2006. The plaintiffs in Shuti, the Coalition to Defend Affirmative Action, had argued that this constitutional ban denied minority groups fair access to the political process. For example, they contended that rural white Michiganders could lobby the University of Michigan to adopt admissions policies that favored rural students who are mostly white, while black and Latino Michigan citizens could not lobby the university to adopt race conscious policies because of the constitutional ban and that black and Latino citizens would have to overcome a very high burden to change the Michigan Constitution. The Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals agreed with the Coalition to Defend Affirmative Action and struck down Michigan's constitutional ban. But in Shuti, uh, the opinion by Justice Anthony Kennedy rejected this argument and held that such a state constitutional ban on race conscious admissions does not violate the Equal Protection Clause. The opinion was also clear that Shuti was not about the constitutionality or the merits of race conscious university admissions. Uh, the Supreme Court's 2013 decision in Fisher v. Texas was about those issues. And in Fisher, the Supreme Court ruled that universities could use race as an admissions factor if necessary to achieve diversity, reaffirming its earlier ruling in Grutter v. Bollinger. Shuti was essentially about whether voters in a state could prevent public universities from using race uh, as an admissions factor in spite of the Supreme Court's ruling. Um, and in deciding Shuti, the Supreme Court settled a split among the circuit courts. The Ninth Circuit's Court of Appeals had upheld California's constitutional ban on race conscious admissions policies. Well, as noted, the Sixth Circuit had struck down Michigan's ban. And with the Shuti ruling, the Supreme Court just reinstated uh, the Michigan's constitutional ban. So the Shuti decision means that state constitutional bans on race conscious policies will remain in place in states such as California, Washington, Arizona, and Michigan. However, Shuti does not prevent public universities in other states from using race conscious admissions policies, and it has no effect on private universities. So it will not, it does not really have any new impact on the current status of race conscious admissions policies. Nevertheless, Shuti does reflect a couple of important points about such policies. Uh, first, it shows how divided the Supreme Court justices are on the issue. Justice Sonia Sotomayor wrote a long dissent, which she read from the bench. And in her dissent, um, she passionately articulated why race matters um, and why it must be taken into account if we ever want to get beyond racism. Conversely, Justice Antonin Scalia wrote a concurrence in Shuti about how it was such a bizarre case because, in his view, the Equal Protection Clause precludes race-conscious policies rather than, than mandating them. So there's a, a charged division of opinion on the court and in our society generally. Uh, second, when taken together with Fisher, Shuti suggests that the Supreme Court justices as a whole would prefer that political process, uh, state referenda uh, to pass constitutional bans or legislative action, gradually eliminate race conscious admissions policies rather than a sweeping pronouncement by the court itself. Uh, so the upshot here is that the charged debate over race conscious admissions policies will not just be settled in one fell swoop by the Supreme Court, at least not now. Uh, it appears that the debate will continue for many years to come.